We're finally catching a dry break as we head through the overnight and into your Sunday, and we'll likely see our temperatures jump briefly. I'll have the very latest forecast for you. The road to national number nine continues. We'll take you to Nashville, where history is on the line for the Wildcats. The Cats are in Nashville, but plenty of fans still here in Lexington are cheering on their Cats from afar. See how they celebrated win number 33. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. The rain is finally clearing up. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Kristen Kennedy. The weekend got off to a pretty wet start, but now it looks like we'll get a little break. Jim Caldwell's tracking some changes in the forecast. Yeah, an improving forecast as we head into the overnight and especially into the day tomorrow. We'll likely see temperatures with sunshine. That's going to make all the difference in the world. Somewhere in the mid and upper 50s. Tonight, though, we find ourselves with some upper 40s and low 50s throughout most of the area. You go down to southern parts of Kentucky, 52 degree reading in a couple of locations down there, but that's about it. Down to 48 degrees for you folks there in Frankfurt. So, kind of a cooler air mass seeping in, and many spots, maybe in the upper 30s, low 40s, to start your Sunday morning off. Here's Defender. That's Kentucky's most powerful live Doppler, but when it's out of rain, it's out of rain, and we are completely out of but all of that moisture pulled well off to our south and east earlier today. Just tracking some of the cloud cover associated with some of that moisture now. And even those showers are really starting to dissipate across Tennessee. So we're getting into that dry break finally. We're marching towards spring this week. And as we do, we are going to be up and down with temperatures. A typical March ride this week. Very warm beginning to the week. A cool air invasion toward mid and latter parts of the week. And then we'll also be tracking some shower chances right back here into Kentucky. But at least that. Background is nice and pleasant because it makes you think spring thoughts. We'll take a closer look at all of it for you coming up in just a few minutes. Call it history in the making. Today, UK beat Auburn in the SEC tournament semifinals, making it 33 straight wins for the Cats, the longest winning streak in school history. Lee K. Howard's here with highlights from the big game. Yeah, number one ranked Kentucky looking to remain undefeated, taking on the surprising story of the SEC tournament, the Auburn Tigers, the Big Blue Nation's finest on hand in Nashville. There, gotta love the fans, right? For this one, Kentucky would jump on the Tigers early. Tyler Eulis gets it inside, makes that wraparound pass to Willie Colley Stein, two handed jam. Ashley Judd likes what she sees. The undersized Tigers just too small. The double block on the layup of Casey Ross Miller leads to the fast break. Trey Lyles there. He takes the bump, makes the layup, and one. Wildcats in control. Kentucky pushing the tempo all game. Euless with the cross court pass to Andrew Harrison. Steps into the wide open three pointer. He had 15 points as the Wildcats would have five players in double figures. And how about that? Willie Colley Stein on the alley oop. Look out below. That'll get the Big Blue Nation out of their seats. Colley Stein led the Wildcats with 18 points and one big stare. 91 to 67. Now 33 and 0 on this season. We now head to Nashville and Rob Bromley. For the Cats now, 33 games and 33 wins. They continue undefeated. They were expected to roll over Auburn here in the SEC semifinals, and they did. 18 for Willie Cauley Stein, his second highest scoring game of the season. Only against Texas did he have more back in December. The John Calipari just likes the way his offense is working. And I don't want their, him to feel there's an expectation he has to be that good every night, but strive to be that good. And uh, the good news with this team, if he's not, or Andrew's not, we're still okay. When he's focused, he's just one of the best players in the country, if not the best. So uh, it's just it's just hard to, to 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 play against us when he's when he's like that. The Cats go for their 28th SEC tournament title, and they will try to make it 34 in a row without a loss going into next week's NCAA tournament when they take on Arkansas here in the championship game Sunday. At Bridgestone Arena, Rob Bromley, WKYT. All right, thank you, Rob. We will have much more on that game and the game with the Arkansas Razorbacks coming up a little bit later in game time. UK fans packed Bridgestone Arena, making it look more like Rupp Arena today. Jennifer Palumbo caught up with one fan who has a pretty special connection to Coach Cal. 
Bridgestone Arena is quiet right now, but it will be filled with UK fans when Kentucky takes on Arkansas as the Cats go for the school's 28th SEC tournament title and look to extend their winning streak to 34 0. Three generations of Calipari men are at the SEC tournament. John Calipari coaching on the sidelines with his father Vince and his son Brad cheering in the stands. The game was great. The boys played great. And uh, a little bit too many fouls, though, but what are you going to do? What, what does it mean? You're here with Brad. I mean, what does it mean for your family to be here? Oh, that was great. I haven't seen Brad for uh, couple, probably a couple months. So it, it was nice. Finding family time is tough with his son's busy schedule. That's why Vince Calipari goes to as many UK games as he can, and he's enjoying every memorable moment of this season. It's it's been good. It's been good for the the city, the town election, the college, and everything. And all the fans are crazy, just like John says. We're you're all yet. crazy. Great. We're not done yet. <laughs> no, we're not done yet. So for the third day in a row here in Nashville, Bridgestone Arena will look more like Rupp Arena as the Big Blue Nation takes over, cheering on the Cats to what they hope will be an SEC tournament title with March Madness ending in Indianapolis and the school's ninth national title. In Nashville, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. Back to you. And back here in Lexington, fans are celebrating another win and being another step closer to an SEC championship. Garrett Weimer caught up with Cats fans in downtown Lexington. On a wet weekend in Lexington with the Cats out of town, Rupp Arena was not full of UK basketball fans. But plenty of places were. So, you know, everybody's coming out, you know, wearing blue and white. You know, something, I mean, something that the whole entire state of Kentucky would be wearing at this point. Yes, there's a lot of green, but this is still Big Blue Nation. They just don't want to get pinched. Others, however, just can't hide their, well, wildcat pride. There's a stuff that bleeds that's going through my veins right now, and it is blue. Yep. I bleed blue, and I come to represent UK. Go <laughs> Cats fans who were out watching the game say it felt like an NCAA tournament atmosphere here in Lexington, and they say that's how every game seems like now. Even though the pressure grows with every game, so does fans' confidence. We definitely got the team for it this year, and, uh, and I think they play good, they deserve it. Despite the clouds. But as long as we go to the Final Four, I'll be a content person. It's nothing but big blue skies for Big Blue Nation. To win the national title, bring it back for the ninth time, and then another banner is going to be hanging up at Rub. And that's a forecast good for the whole month of March. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And for more UK and SEC tournament coverage, just go to our website, WKYT.com. State police are investigating a deadly shooting in Bath County tonight that happened on White Oak Road. Troopers say 36 year old Jeremy Clark and 20 year old Travis Beecraft were arguing about an animal when troopers say Beecraft shot and killed Clark. Louisville police are also investigating a shooting that sent a four year old child to the hospital. The shooting happened last night at a home off Cave Run Road in Louisville. Police won't say who pulled the trigger, only that they're not looking for anyone else involved at this time. An Eastern Kentucky Corrections officer is on the other side of jail tonight. State police say Officer Billy Ferguson from West Liberty was a guard at the Eastern Kentucky Correctional Complex. Troopers say Ferguson is under investigation for an incident at the complex, but police haven't released any details about it. Ferguson is charged with unlawful imprisonment. Police are trying to track down a man they say robbed the Lexington restaurant. Police say around 3.30 this afternoon, a man wearing a hoodie, mask, and surgical gloves walked into the Burger King on Clay's Mill Road and demanded cash. We're told he was carrying a cap gun, fired three shots, and then took off. Witnesses last saw him near the apartments across the street. Talks to raise the minimum wage in Lexington could soon be on the table. The Urban County Council plans on discussing a proposal to raise the minimum wage to 10.10 an hour in the next three years. About 31,000 people in the city currently make less than 10.10 an hour. Council member Jennifer Mazzotti, who's pushing the proposal, hopes council members will vote to move it out of committee Tuesday. So far, Mayor Jim Gray has not publicly supported the proposal.